Good morning. Welcome to another in the series of Read the Word, where you and I are reading the Word through chronologically this year, according to how it happened. And it's getting pretty exciting. We're about to begin to hear the prophets begin to speak, and we're going to see the whole Old Testament come to life. God's got his nation, the children of Israel established. He's got his laws established. He's now on his second king, King David. And it's starting to come together. It's very interesting that this is, Second Samuel is written almost 1,000 years before Jesus was born. And yet over and over we see David prophesying about Jesus coming and and exact words of what would be the process of what happened. And then we see Jesus quoting him. The disciples quoted him. Prophets quoted him. And yet David was a king. The majestic word of God, how it's, it's seen together, sewed together, pieced together. The beautiful tapestry of oneness that's Absolutely amazing. Can't have just the old without the new. You can't have just the the new without the old. You got to have them both. In Jesus' mighty name, welcome. It is Monday, May the 9th. Let's pray our opening prayer, and we'll get into today's reading from 2 Samuel and Chronicles. Pray this prayer with me. 156. Father, I open my spirit, soul, and body to be led by you today so that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith so that I will be rooted and grounded in love and be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height, so I will know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that I may be filled with all the fullness of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen and amen. 255, 2 Samuel chapter 8. After this, it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Methag Amma from the hand of the Philistines. Then he defeated Moab, forcing them down to the ground. He measured them off with a line. With two lines, he measured off those to be put to death. And with one full line, those to be kept alive. So the Moabites became David's servants and brought tribute. David also defeated Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his territory at the river Euphrates. David took from him 1,000 chariots, 700 horsemen, 20,000 foot soldiers. Also, David hamstrung all the chariot horses, except that he spared enough of them for 100 chariots. Amazing. When the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadezer, king of Zobah, David killed 22,000 of the Syrians. Then David put garrisons garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants and brought tribute. So the Lord preserved David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold that had belonged to the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. Also from Beda and from Berathai, cities of Hadadezer, 
King David took a large amount of bronze. When Toei, king of Hamath, heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadezer, then Toei sent to J Joram, his son, sent Joram, his son, to King David to greet him and bless him because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him. For Hadadezer had been at war with Toei. And Joram brought with him articles of silver, articles of gold, and articles of bronze. You don't come to a king without a king's gift in your hand. Verse 11, King David also dedicated these to the Lord along with the silver and the gold that he had dedicated from all the nations which he had subdued. From Syria, from Moab, from the people of Ammon, from the Philistines, from Amalek, and from the spoil of Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah. And David made himself a name when he returned from killing 18,000 Syrians in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom throughout all Edom. He put garrisons. And all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. That's twice we've seen that said now. Verse 15, David reigned over all Israel and David administered judgment and justice to all his people. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the army. Jehoshaphat, the son of uh, Ahilad was the recorder. Zadok, the son of Ahidab, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priest. Sariah was the scribe. Ben Ahiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over both the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And David's sons were chief ministers, giving us a very accurate historical record of what happened so that his story, God's story, can be properly seen and recorded and then checked and rechecked so that anybody that comes can see the divine accuracy of his, of his kingdom and of his awesome word. Isn't that just awesome? Well, here we go. 803, chapter 9. David's kindness to Mephibosheth. Now, David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, At your service. The king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. The king said, Well, where is he? Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he's in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. King David sent and brought him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. Then David said to Mephibosheth, and he answered, here is your servant. David said to him, do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake. And we restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. 
Where'd that restore word? There it is. Verse 8, then he bowed himself and said, what is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? Did you hear him call himself a dead dog? Jesus said, out of the abundance of your mouth, your heart speaks. And that means if you see yourself as a dead dog, so you shall be. And what you hear yourself saying out of your mouth about yourself, this is 1030, is what you're going to become. Now, Jesus didn't say that what you say out of your mouth has to be yourself. Jesus is just telling you, get your heart fixed so you don't walk around calling yourself a dead dog. Or like Ruth and Naomi, Ruth said, don't call me Ruth, call me Mara, call me bitter because of what's gone on in my life. But that wasn't God's plan, was it? Verse 8, he bowed himself and said, what is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And the king called the Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to all his house. You, therefore, and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him. And you shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my tables always. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. How does one man have 15 sons? That is interesting. Verse 11, then Ziba said to the king, according to all that my lord, the king has commanded his servant, so will your servant do. As for Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth said the king, he shall eat at my table like the one of the king's son. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all who dwelt in the house of Ziba, Ziba were servants of Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he, he ate continually at the king's table, and he was lame in both feet. don't know if you remember our reading. Uh, on the, I think, I believe it was the day that uh, King Saul and and Jonathan were killed. They were fleeing with Mephibosheth and dropped him and broke both of his feet. And that's what had gone on while he was lame. Here we go. 1321. First Chronicles chapter 18. After this, it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines subdued them, took Gath and its towns from the hand of the Philistines. Then he defeated Moab and the Moabites because David's servants had brought tribute. And David defeated Hadadezer, the king of Zobah, as far as Hamath, as he went to establish his power by the river Euphrates. David took from him 1,000 chariots, 700 horsemen, 20,000 foot soldiers. David hamstrung all the chariot horses, except that he spared enough of them for 100 chariots. When the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadadezer, king of Zobah, David killed 22,000 of the Syrians. Then David put garrisons in Syria and Damascus, and the Syrians became <coughs> David's servants. And brought tribute, so the Lord preserved David wherever he went. Now, what you just got to see about what we just read is the father is given David instruction of how to deal with these wicked nations who have been so anti-God. Verse 7, David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. Also from Tibhath and from Chun, cities of Hadadezer. David brought a large amount of bronze 
with which Solomon made the bronze sea, the pillars, and the articles of bronze. So now you see why David got all that bronze was to build the temple. David didn't build it, but Solomon did. Verse 9, now when Tohu, king of Hamath, heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, he sent Hadaram, his son, to king David to greet him and bless him because he fought against Hadadezer and defeated him. For Hadadezer had been at war with Tohu, and Hadaram brought with him all kinds of articles of gold, silver, and bronze. King David also dedicated those to the Lord, along with the silver and the gold that he had brought from all these nations, from Edom, Moab, Ammon, Philistines, and Amalek. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, killed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants, and the Lord preserved David wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel and administered judgment and justice to all his people. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the army. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilad, was recorder. Zadok, the son of Ahitab, and Abimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests. Shabshah was the scribe. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites and the Pelathites. And David's sons were chief ministers at the king's side. This is the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. And that's why we're reading it right alongside of 2 Samuel. You see, we get a little bit of a different picture from each one. And that picture makes the whole picture of what's going on in the kingdom of Israel. Now, remember, God is establishing David's kingdom because he told him he would. He said, you're a man after my own heart. Therefore, I will establish your kingdom forever. Someone from your family will be on the throne from this day forward. That was, uh, this is almost a thousand years before Jesus. So this was 3,300 years ago, and it's still the case today. And it'll be the case because Jesus will sit on that throne forever and ever. Now, you and I have been studying it, looking and saying, look at what God is doing as he's establishing his nation. Now watch. God established David as a kingdom. But God has given you and I the kingdom. Jesus said, I have given you the keys of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 18. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Well, if he's given us the keys to the kingdom, then that means he's given us the kingdom. And you and I, the, the greatest revelation we got to come to is, hold up, we are kings and priests to our God. What does that mean? Why did the Holy Spirit put that in the Bible? Give us a covenant. Give us an inheritance. Give us a relationship. He didn't do it just so we can be quote unquote church members. He did it so we can walk with him every day in Jesus mighty name. Now let's pray the prayer of salvation. That's all of our verses for today, right? All right. Let's pray the prayer of salvation and we will, we want to make sure that everyone that comes here has the opportunity to know who our God is. We're sharing this on on uh, YouTube, we're sharing this on Facebook and on Blog Talk Radio. And you never know who's going to be here. What does it mean to be born again, Pastor? It means this. When Adam was in the garden and, him, and he and Eve sinned, God said, you'll, you'll die when you eat of this tree. Well, they didn't die. Adam lived to be 930 years old. His spirit man lost the connection between him and God. God couldn't look on sin. Adam couldn't reach God. God came down and sacrificed an animal, covered his sins with the blood, made, made for him um, clothing of goat skin. So when you and I are born again, our spirit 
gets that 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 former connection with God. And literally, according to the book of John, we become one with the Father again. And that 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 relationship is opened back up. And now, like um, the apostle John said, the Father is seeking those who will have that one-on-one -on -one relationship. And that's what you're about to receive right now. Pray this prayer of salvation, prayer of reconciliation with me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I know I need you in my life every day. I know I need you in my life every day. And according to John 3.16. And according to John 3.16. When I believe in you. When I believe in you. You give me everlasting life. You give me everlasting and life. And I will not perish. And I will not perish. And I thank you for that. And I thank you. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Jesus, I believe. You and are you the rose Son again of God. on the third day for me. And you rose again on the third day for me. Put your hands up and just say it. I receive you into my life right now. I receive you into my life right now. All of your grace. All of your grace. All of your mercy. All of your mercy. All of your love. All of your righteousness. All of your righteousness. Filling every part of my life. Filling every part of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word Pray of God. in my heavenly language. Pray in my heavenly language. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen. And amen. And, and this is what we say. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Now, more than likely, if you just prayed that prayer with us, you've already been seeking God saying, bring me an answer. We, we ask God for supernatural divine connections between you and us that God brings people just like you to this program. This is what just happened. Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, just came mm -hmm. into your life and he filled you with faith where you once had fear. Jesus, the light of the world, just came in and he filled you with light where you once had darkness. Jesus came with all of his righteousness. And now where you had sin, he wipes away the sin and fills you with his righteousness. Your righteousness and mine will never be good enough. But Jesus' righteousness will always be good. Enough. Welcome to the family. The Father has adopted you, Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. You've been adopted into the family. You are an heir of God. You are a joint heir with Jesus. You are in the family. You no longer have to worry about it. You're in the family. Now, what's your assignment but to walk with God every single day of your life? And that's what we're here for. That's what this program is here for. In the notes, right down there, you're going to find a link to all of these programs, just like this that we just did. We've read the book of Genesis, the, the whole Bible, from the book of Genesis, clear through 2 Kings chapter number 9. Is that what we were today? Nine. And uh, there's a video in a playlist right down there in the notes where you can click on Genesis 1-1 and follow our process all the way through to where we are today. I think it's pretty cool. You can send it anywhere around the world. Just send that YouTube link. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your brother, your sister, your mother, everybody you know. Come and listen to the word of God. It's a pretty amazing study. And we welcome you to it in Jesus' mighty name. Well, we're here every morning, so make sure you get connected. Sunday mornings, we have communion together. And if you want more teaching and training besides just this, we have a program called Establishing Your Faith. It, it airs on YouTube Live and Facebook Live, uh, Blog Talk Radio. 
at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, right on this YouTube channel and in our Community of Faith channel. And you go to the website, SamuelJCoddle.com. You can find all of this information, there. even the communion service, so you can take it at home. All right. Got to run. Shoot me an email. Send me a card or letter. Love to hear from you. Tell us your story. Give us a prayer request. We will help you walk with God. Till we see you again, this is what we always say. We love we you. We love you. And yeah. God loves you. He really does. And yeah. Jesus yeah. is Lord. Lord. No matter what anybody says. See you soon. In Jesus' mighty name.